Exercise number three in our eight exercise progression for activating your glutes during the deadlift is a, a alternating type of exercise. It's a one-sided exercise. So up until this point, exercise number one was the uh, rock back with a little bit of abs and I'm here, okay? Everything's very symmetrical there. We turn on the abs to help shut off the hip flexors. Exercise number two was a hip lift with my hips flexed to 90 degrees. In here, we're trying to turn on the hamstrings now also to shut off the hip flexors. In exercise number three, <clears throat> we are now bringing our feet down to the ground instead of picked up on some sort of bench or in my case, a couch because I'm in my living room. Uh, we're bringing our feet down to the ground. This challenges us by increasing the hip extension demand. So now my hip flexors are more stretched here than they were here, right? They're shorter here than they are here. So this becomes more challenging and therefore this type of hip lift transfers better to the deadlift. The other big difference here is not only are my hips not flexed up anymore, but now my feet are flat in something, which they're generally flat during your deadlift as well, right? So it looks more similar to a deadlift. We've increased the amount of sensation that you need to deal with. So make sure you get it right. Take this one slow. This one's kind of almost a, a bonus here. I might not actually do this one with everyone, but if I'm outlining, like in this case, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make this as bulletproof as I can. So these eight exercises here are designed to be very, very uh, minute steps so that each little thing you've set yourself, it's not that much different from the last thing that you've done. And it makes it more likely that you're going to be successful here in turning those glutes on. So in this position, it's just like the hip lift, right? So first thing, exhale, lift the tailbone. Do you feel your low back in the ground? No, I do not. Okay, shut your abs off. Do you feel your low back in the ground now? Yes, yes I do. Good, okay. If you haven't been able to get that, make sure you can get it in the hip lift in video number two before you try to do it here because it is more difficult. Hip lift. Low back is down, yes. Do you feel the fronts of your legs? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Okay, shut the abs off. You're talking, Lance, I can see you using them. Okay. <sighs> yes, now, now I'm pushing harder through my feet. I feel my legs a lot more than uh, the, the, the back sides of my legs rather than the front sides of my legs. So I'm holding this. So far, everything is very similar. Now instead of reaching both arms up like the last exercise. Now we're only gonna reach one arm up. Bam, and we're gonna reach the other leg up too. So what this does is it amplifies everything because now this whole hip lift has to be held with only this one side of my hamstring. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna try to bring, and keep my legs straight, bring it up as far as I can. I'm gonna take my arm, bring it out as far as I can to see if I can touch. Ooh, I've got a pretty nauseating stretch in the, my calf right there. And we're just gonna breathe. We're gonna hold this. In the nose. Out the mouth. And that really helped me out there. Hold and breathe in. And breathe out. So similar ideas. Remember, I'm looking for the outer lower abs, not just these crunching abs. Oftentimes where people mess up here is one, they lose the hamstring because they turn the abs on too quickly. And two, they do this reach like this. Okay. And they, this is maybe a better exaggeration. So I'm crunching here and I'm not <sighs> exhaling all the way. So this exhale has a nice gradual rounding of my midsection and that is what I'm looking for. If I take my other hand and I check, my ribs are down here and that is a good thing, right? If I do it this way, 
I can still reach up, but I'm just crunching. I'm using these front abs. I'm not using the outer lower abs quite as much. Okay. So big, big mistakes. We said um, too much ab on the setup, losing the hamstring, and too much crunch on the reach, losing the uh, ribs coming down part of that. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna pin it and hold it and try to get a nice stretch for five breaths or so. You can even uh, alternate this one and do like little leg lifts. That's not a bad way to do this. But you gotta make sure that every time, like I'm doing this pretty quickly because I do this a lot uh, and I've thought about this exercise a lot, but if you're doing this for the first time, you've got to set up the same way, make sure you got your hamstrings, then pick your leg up, and then reach your arm, and then make sure you maintain those things as you come back down and switch sides. So you'll need to slow down so that you can feel through it. But this alternating leg raise, arm reach, supine hook lying, hip lift, whatever we're calling this, um, this is a good one to progress away from the 90-90. Remember we talked feet flat. We talked about still shutting off the hip flexors, still turning on the hamstrings, but now we're doing it in a position that's a little bit harder to control.